could be a defining week of the season for a whole host of teams. We've got the second legs of the Champions League and Arsenal and Liverpool. We're going to touch on both of those teams in this week's ESPN football forecast with myself, James Alcott and Nabeel Haroon, who joins me. And we're going to kick off with Bayern versus Arsenal. And it's one where very contrasting weekends mm. that I think when you look at the, the game on its own, the first leg, which we'll come to, that's one thing. But for Bayern Munich, obviously... I've, I've lost the league now, but they kind of knew that was coming, but did win the game itself. So maybe a release of energy there. For Arsenal, <laughs> for Arsenal, a wobble, a possible wobble. And I guess it's all about how you come back from those things. And they have to come back with a very difficult away trip at Bayern Munich. Going into it, how, how do you think those Arsenal players are feeling after that loss against Aston Villa? How, how big is it? The the reaction probably told you everything. The players were on their knees, similar to the Liverpool game. And it, I think it's been spoken about a lot, but it felt like that was it. Like the title is now done. But it could also mean that Arteta says to him, OK, maybe the title is done, but we've got the Champions League here, mm. right in the palm of our hands. We can get revenge on City if they go through. I think they've got to go with that mentality. I just, I mean, it's really bad to say this, and Arsenal fans watching are going to hate this, but... Do they have that in them? I mean, and so far they haven't proven that they have. I don't know if you feel I'm being harsh. That, no, I mean, no. Do you know what it feels like for me? The analogy I have is when when they lost that game, it, I could hear glass <laughs> smashing. <laughs> it was like something. It was like this sort of this uh, idea of the belief that we can go and win it all. That that felt like, and again, this is maybe a little bit dramatic. That felt like it shattered a touch. Mm. But I think that, and we said this last week on this show, the wobble's going to come, the bad result is going to come. How do they respond to that? And actually, you've got a game here where, for me, if, if I'm Arteta and I'm going into the next game, a game uh, where, I mean, we can get to the point of, are they favourites or not? But do they need, is it about them scoring or is it about them stopping the opposition a little bit? I don't think they have to go out and win it. It's not like there's not that impetus of being at home and going and winning those games like like the Aston Villa game. Mm. And, and this is again the the weak point for me with Arsenal and what will be will be in terms of them winning any competitions this year. But they, I think, what people want to see them is for them to go the distance. And the the question mark has always been: Can they break down the opposition, especially when the opposition is supposedly inferior? This is a different kind of game. Mm. This is a comp this is a game where you're playing against a team that are have won the Champions League numerous times. Arsenal, you know, from a historic point of view, are the underdogs in this game, and they go away and it's level, it's nil nil, and out of possession, this Arsenal side is very very good, and the impetus will be on Bayern Munich. Question for you: Do you feel like the way that the the game played out in the first leg, where Bayern Munich were fantastic on the counter attack and Arsenal struggled with it up to the last 20 minutes, let's say, where mm. Bayern Munich were trying to kind of hold their lead, which is understandable. Game stakes sort of came into play. And we've seen this with Arsenal at home in particular, their ability to slowly gather more and more control in the game. And they were obviously pushing for the, for, for the winner. They didn't get it. But now in the second leg, do Bayern, did they have to be the aggressors here? Or should they almost allow Arsenal to have a bit of control so that they can hurt them the way that they hurt them in the first leg? It's strange because on one end, you've got Arteta, who I think he, he desires control. He desires control in the game state. And on the, on the flip side, you've got Thomas Tuchel, who I actually think in his best managerial stint actually wants you to have the game state yeah. so that he can find other ways to win the game. Bayern are at home, but I do feel this season, now I've spoken to a few Bayern fans, they don't expect anything of Tuchel. They're almost like gone, we're done with this guy, we're done with this season. Really? So Tuchel might have a free license here to go actually we will sit off because we've just seen Arsenal play against Villa where Arsenal kept the ball and they popped it around and they, and they did well in possession at times but then when Bayern can hit them on the counter as you saw and we said this on the show last week we need to see Arsenal concede and we didn't mean that from a perspective of we need to see it we need to see what would happen after I think what Bayern did they unlocked a way that other teams in the Premier League haven't at the moment or they have now in, in how to score against Arsenal which is not get your men flying forward in, in straight arrows, because Arsenal defend that all day, is get your wingers coming inside and making direct runs that way. Yeah. And the moment that happened, you had Saliba and Gabriel going, whoa, 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 whoa. And I do think Bayern will go, we could probably get away with doing that again. Mm. Thing is, like, Arsenal come into this and, and they'll, like, I, I personally feel like Arsenal are the team under pressure. Because they're the favourites. Yeah, uh, do you think they're the favourites? I don't think... I, I think, think it depends what country you're in. 
yeah. honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, d- despite what you're you're saying, I, I still think Bayern. The press would be going, "Hang on a minute, we're Bayern Munich. We we should, you know, we should be disposing of of Arsenal. Maybe we're we're living in a new world now. Arsenal off the back of a defeat here as well." Let's get to the game and uh, two sides of the pitch, actually. First of all, the right hand side. In terms of throw ons, I found this quite interesting. Arsenal had 21 throw throw ons to the 15 of Bayern Munich. I would hypothesize the idea that that is because there was a real focus down the right hand side for mm. Arsenal in this one. Alfonso Davies got uh, suspended for this game in that one, and so we'll miss out. You've got Mazrawi on the, the right hand side. So f- going forward, let's start from the right hand side because I think defensively we need to have a look at the left hand side for Arsenal. <laughs> but going forward on that right hand side, Ben White, um, Saka, and Odegaard caused a lot of problems. How do you feel about the fact that Alfonso Davies will be missing this in this game, and Masrawi, who can play right or left, will probably be that left back. Masrawi's probably better suited to go up against Saka. I think one thing we've seen this season is fullbacks that tend to stop him are fullbacks that are actually um, right footed or comfortable on the opposite side. Because obviously, Saka wants to come inside. You saw the goal from that, yeah, great. Yeah, point. whereas when Alfonso Davies doesn't want to defend on the inside, his body just doesn't want to go into that position. And often he's, got, he's gone on and he's bombed on. He did it actually in this game, I think, uh, towards the end. They picked the ball up, or sorry, no, in the first half, they picked the ball up, they switched it onto his side. He's gone flying past the winger, and you've just gone, whoa. Like, Saka just stood there and went, if this lands to me, it's game over. It actually went to Saka, and I, I can't remember who went over. I think Goretzka went over and sweeped up. So I do think Arsenal have that side, but it's it's actually Arsenal's left-back area that I think we have to talk about. Zinchenko or Kivior, one of them two has to start, and I don't think either are that comfortable. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me there, I was grimacing there, which it feels, again, that, you know, that shattering of the glass. It's, it, all of these players, football's so funny because one bad result, and you just start to look at, like, two bad results, for, or two games without Havertz scoring a goal. Or Jesus, <laughs> not, Jesus is having one bad game against Aston Villa. Martinelli was pretty kind of impotent in this uh, first leg as well, and you start to go, oh, you know, have they got much going for them? Mm. And you know, three weeks ago, they they were they were on fire. That left back position is definitely a weak area. Um, I think obviously Timber would, at the start of the season would have been the guy that they would have wanted to sort of grow into that role. Zinchenko, it's one where wow, his stock has really dropped for a lot of people. I think he's phenomenal on the ball, although he he tries he takes chances which can hurt you. But that, this doesn't feel like a game for him. I thought it was the right decision to bring him on, and I thought there was a, an improvement for Arsenal in this first leg when he did come on. Kivior, in transition, in that first leg, struggled. Mm. Really, really struggled. And so coming into the second leg, there's there's a big, big decision there to be made. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Tommy Asu there. Really? I really wouldn't be That'd surprised. That'd be very pragmatic, though, in a Champions League game that's 2-2, that I think Arsenal, Arsenal have to win. I think they both... I think they both want to play in the counter attack. I do. I do. I what get what you're saying about control with Arteta. <laughs> mm. I get that, but I think away from home, I think there's something different here. Where you know, if they can be solid and and because the problem is for Arsenal and the way they conceded those goals was it was on it was mm. on the break and it was mistake after mistake. It was Declan Rice diving in. It was Kivior getting turned. You know, you got a penalty there. You got it was poor play. Um, when it came to those goals and and they didn't need to happen. Now, if they play like they did away at Man City and they're compact, Mm. they'll have the press high up when they can. But if not, we go, you know, two banks of four or four, four, two out of possession. That has been something that's worked for them very, very well. And I think this one's going right to the end of the game. I don't, there's no like, oh, someone's won it free now, which is dangerous because last week we said Liverpool were going to beat Atalanta (laughs) and we'll talk about that as well. Um, Martinelli, I'd like to see more from him in a game like this. It's going to be a big one for Kimmich on that right-hand side in terms of him stepping up and getting involved. What about the midfield? Because you've got someone like Pavlovich who is back, young lad, really, really impressive player. And I think in a perfect world, you might want to see him maybe with Kimmich, mm. but that's not going to be the case. But the midfield too did okay, didn't they? Yeah, we, we actually said last week that they should, they should surrender the midfield battle. Mm. Um, but I think they were okay. I think physically Goretzka and Conrad Lima can handle the battle, but in possession, they're both really sloppy. Yeah. And also Musiala didn't have a good game. So when they were getting the ball into him, he was losing it and he's just kept coming back at them. One thing that was interesting and people have spoken about this a lot recently, in particular Arsenal fans, is Rice isn't this player who's going to pick the ball up and start pinging it around for them. That, that's why Jorginho's in there. That's why I think on the flip side... 
in this game, Musiala's got to go. If Jorginho's playing as a six, let me get in and around him. Because that, that's where I can pick the ball up. And we know athletically Jorginho's not as athletic as Musiala. Mm. That's where I think Bayern can win the game. And I think we touched on this last week with Arsenal. They often struggle with a forward that drops as like a, a sort of a false nine at times. Happened against Liverpool. Wouldn't say it really happened against Villa. Different sort of game. But if Kane drops in there, I think Arsenal have a different sort of problem. Well, here's my boy. Let's talk about Harry. <laughs> because, I mean, it's written for him. It's there, isn't it? You know, and going into it, maybe a week ago, with everything that was swirling around Bayern Munich um, and going into this game, it felt like Arsenal were on such a high. You know, fast forward a week and Bayern <laughs> Munich are, you know, at least they understand their fate, that it's gone now, that the Bundesliga, mm-hmm. and they gave a promising uh, performance in that first one. And that's sort of, a, you know, the best bits of Harry Kane are what we've seen at times in, in the counter-attacking transition side of it him dropping deep and maybe a game for tell. We're mm. thinking that uh, Nabry's not going to be fit for this one. But on the counter-attack, again, I keep coming back to that. I think they were really, really impressive. He's got to have a say in this, hasn't he? I mean, he did the first time around. And actually, I think Gabriel struggled against him at times. There was a load of stuff going around, in particular Arsenal fans saying, Kane's a nasty footballer. He does have that in him. And I think clever. Yeah, he's very clever. And he was sort of dragging Gabriel into areas that he didn't want to be in. So Harry Kane's always going to have a say because even, even though he scored a pen, etc., etc. His performance was unbelievable. I yeah, almost yeah, forgot yeah. how good he was. Yeah. He's picking the ball and playing cross field passes like where the pass wasn't even there to be played. So he's that's the guy. That's why I keep coming back. If there is space there for him, yeah. that's why it's, this is a confusing one for me, I'll be honest. What's your prediction? Does this end with a Harry Kane fifth penalty in on a penalty shootout? I think last week I said Arsenal will win away and that's how they'll go through. So I'll, I'll do it, James Orcott. I'll stick to my guns. <laughs> but I, inside, sure that's I I don't, <laughs> inside, I don't feel like Arsenal are going to win. I think. I think they're going to have a hangover from the Villa game. Um, and so I do actually. Actually, so I'm not going to stick to my guns at all. I think mean, Bayern are going to win. Yeah, I, two, one. I am going to stick to my guns. <laughs> I said I, I thought Arsenal would do it uh, away from home. I think this still is a fragile uh, Bayern side. And I think actually it might play into their hands. Um, I think, yeah, I want, you need to see so much more from Martinelli and Saka. But in a gig, big game where you're going to play on the counter attack, I actually think Arsenal will step up and I think they'll get the, they'll get the job done. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below.